from Test Mike. What's up guys? Learning with Rich here again. In this video, I'm going to show you uh, one way to generate your HVAC system layout. Alright, so I'm going to show you the first way to do that and then on the next video, I'm going to show you the other way to do uh, your HVAC system layout. Alright, so as you can see in this model, so I actually didn't put the layout in this portion here because this is where I'm going to show you the first way of generating your HVAC system layout. Okay, so the first option that we'll be using, so we will be using an automatic layout, which I sometimes use, but most of the time I use manual. Okay, so let's do first the automatic layout. So after you create an HVAC system, like what we have done last time. Okay, so after you add system component to it, all right, so we use automatic system layout tools to review possible routing solution. All right, so automatic uh, layout tools provide multiple layout solutions like a network, perimeter, and intersection. You'll be able to see that uh, later on. Okay, and then before that, we also discuss how to modify the settings of our ducting if you still remember if you go to the systems and then you go to the mechanical settings or you can type ms all right so you can change the settings here of your ducting right if you still remember we have this video uh that i have uploaded last week or i think this week or last week okay anyway so that is what we are going to do. So I'm going to show you first the automatic uh, system layout, generate your layout. And then on our next video, let me show you how to edit your, your layout using a manual editing. Okay, or you can create it manually, which is I prefer most of the time. All right. Okay, so by the way, Revit also provides uh, built-in calculators for sizing mains, branches, and complete ductwork. So these calculations are based on industry standard and you can determine the sizing method used in calculation. Alright, so you can calculate duct sizing using the duct sizing dialog box. Same with your pipe. You can also do that. So that is what I'm going to show to you later on. All right, so let's start to generate our HVAC system. So to do that, first, you need to make sure that the element that you are going to, or the elements that you want to be included to the automatic system layout is included to the system. So just that's why if I'm going to select this air terminal, so if I click that, notice that this uh, mechanical highlights here from the system browsers meaning this air terminal is al already included to a system so if I'm going to expand that I can see that that air terminal is included here okay okay let me just select again all right so once I select so there you go so it's under the uh, supply air system and then this is the equipment that is supplying this um, air terminal so if I'm gonna hover my pointer over the air terminal without selecting it and then press tab I can see that if I click that you will notice that it highlights all the elements that is included to the system just like this eight supply air terminal and then the mechanical equipment here so this is what we did last time on our last video we have put some air terminals and then equipment and then after that we create the system okay so that's why we have that here on the system browser so now that we know that these air terminals that needed to our layout is already part of the system so the next thing that you need to do is you just need to select the L one of the element that is part of the system and then after that, from the layout panel, you can see here, generate layout. Okay, generate layout. So I'm going to go ahead and select this one. So generate layout. And then there you go. So as you can see from the generate layout tab, you have um, the solution here. And then also you have the generate layout options here. So the first option that you have here or the first solution type 
for the automatic system layout is network. So what is network? So when you say network, as you can see, it provides up to six solutions. So in this, uh, for this case, uh, I only have five solutions for the network. So each consisting of a main segment with branches at 90 degrees from the main segment. The main segment here is the blue, uh, the blue uh, line here. So that will going to be your main segment. And then as you can see, the branches T ops 90 degrees from the main segment. Okay, so these are the branches, the green lines. Okay, so network is the default selection and is most likely to be used in most cases. Now, the other solution that we have here is perimeter. So when you say perimeter, it provides an up to five solutions that wrap the main segment around the perimeter of the component. So as you can see, that is the uh, main segment and then our branches teeing from that. Okay, and then the last solution that we have here is intersection. So when you select the intersection, it provides, uh, uh, in this case, up to four, but actually it provides up to eight solutions, each consisting of a main segment routed over the connectors of the components. So each solution consists of branches extending perpendicular from the main segment down to the component. But I don't use this much. As you can see, the solution here is not that good, right? When I click this, so I don't use that. I most of the time use your network if I will go and do the automatic system layout. So that's the network. And you can also select the settings here if you want to modify the main, main duct, and then the branch duct here. You can modify there the duct offset height the flex duct type and also the maximum flex duct length all right okay so now the next thing that i'm gonna do is i'll just use this setting okay so i'll just use this setting here so i'm just going to click the this drop down arrow and then uh it's already set up to my third elbow this which is what i want to use and then the height is 3050 for the branch i'll use this type i'll use this flex duct length okay so for the main i'll just use the default settings here so i'll just select here okay okay so after that so i'm now going to finish the layout so once i select finish layout so you can now see my layout there you go okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to hover my pointer and then press tab tab again to highlight the connection and then click that then after that, um, I'll just use the selection box so I can separate the 3D model of that. There you go. And then probably I can also use the tile views here so I can see the plan view and also the 3D view. Okay. Now the next thing that I'm going to do is um, let us try to do a duck sizing here. Okay. So to do a duck sizing, what I'm going to do is here in 3D view or even on the uh, on the plan view, I'm going to hover my pointer and then press tab again, tab again to highlight the selection and then click that. So once you select that, you will see here from the analysis that you can find the duct pipe sizing. All right. So that is your tool if you want to size your your design. Okay. So let's select that one. And then you can see the duct sizing dialog box. So using the duct sizing dialog box, you can select a dynamic sizing method for the duct work or the pipe of the air system in a, in a project. Okay, so you can select the sizing method to be set along with any constraints that may need to be considered. Just like the default sizing method here is friction. Okay, so there's the friction. You specify the friction, and then if you click the drop down arrow, you also have here velocity, uh, equal friction, and uh, static uh, static regain. Okay, so those are the options that you can select from your uh, from your model. Okay, so basically, when you say uh, when friction 
okay? When just the friction or the velocity sizing method is selected, sizing can be based only on one method or a logical combination of the friction and or um, velocity methods, okay? So when both are selected, the size of the duct must comply with both the friction and velocity value because you can select here friction and velocity. Okay, so when both are selected, friction and velocity, for example, the size of the duct must comply with, the, uh, with both the friction and velocity value. When either is selected, like for example, I select here um, friction, the size of the duct is allowed to break either the friction, let's say or. Okay, so if you select or, okay, when the size of the duct is allowed to break either the friction or velocity rule, but must comply with one rule. Okay, so that's uh, that's how it uh, that's how it works. Now we also have here equal friction and static regain methods. Okay, so the equal friction method creates an initial estimate for duct sizing based on the constant pressure loss per unit of duct length. Okay, so it's specified. Uh, it's specified. Okay, so by default it is um point. Uh, point 0.1, okay, point 0.1 inch, or 25 pascal per 30 meter, something like that. Okay, so I'm not that good in in designing of the duct sizing, but basically that's that's uh, how I know that one. So when you say equal friction, that is the way. So the other one is static regain. Okay, so static regain methods used in Revit. Okay, so that one is based on the ASHRAE standard duct fitting database, which contains information about losses and various duct setting. And I'm not really that good in doing the sizing methods, the equal friction and static regain. So I'll just use here the friction option for that. And then after that, I'm just going to use the default setting here, so 0.82, and I'll just use here only. So I want to base my sizing method based on the friction. So this will going to be the uh, value that the duct needs to get or needs to follow when sizing it, okay? Or the computation needs to follow when sizing our duct, okay? And then for the constraints here, for the branch sizing, so instead of match connector size, I'll just select here larger of connected, a connector and calculated, okay? And then I'm going to restrict also the, the height to 350, okay? So the height will going to be restricted to 350 and then the branch sizing is based on the larger of connector and calculated, all right? So I'll just use... I'll just select here OK to start the computation. And all right, there you go. OK. So as you can see, it's pretty convenient to use this one. As long as the layout that you want to generate or that you want to create will show on the system generation automatic layout. OK, if it is not, of course, you can just uh, do the manual calculation and then you can just lay out it manually just like what we are going to do on our next video so basically as you can see it's now uh, standard sizing based on the Revit computation and aside from that you can also do the system inspector okay so what is this system inspector so the system inspector is used to inspect an air system for critical flow path of branches, main segments, or entire system. Okay, so the system inspector can identify the areas of an air system with the highest pressure loss. So this will allow you to modify the design as required for, for example, maximum security, uh, I mean, maximum economy and efficiency. So how to use this system inspector? So to do that, again, you can just 
hover your pointer, tap, tap, until it highlights all the connectors, connection. And then you can see from the analysis, there's the system inspector. So once you click that, you will now see there your uh, system inspector. So you can do it here on the plan view. So there's your ins uh, system inspector. Okay. So I'm going to select inspect and then you can hover your pointer. Right. See. There's a pressure loss of 0.5. Oh, there's a red one here. So as you can see, this portion here has a big. Uh, pressure loss so you can compute or you can just readjust your uh, ducting here ducting layout so basically that's how you use your system inspector all right so i'm now going to finish this one there you go okay so that's it for our uh, simple exercise of generating the system layout for hvac system so for our next video i'm going to show you how to manually create your ducting so as you can see we haven't created yet our return ducts here as well as not connected to our supply or return air terminal so that is what we are going to do next time so hopefully you learned something from this video if you have any comments questions or suggestions just put it on the comment section below and i'll get back to you as soon as i can thank you for watching have a nice day